so I guess the big news is I just showed these guys The Gifted, which is... Oh, man, I was blown away. It's your my favorite project you've done to the date. Well, thank you. Honestly, Sam. Quite literally. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, quite a vicious, quite a unique, quite original. Yeah, it's, it's well... Quite insane. It is quite insane. I'm. I kind of. I. I almost went insane making it. Yeah, <laughs> I found mean, a universal way to express it. Yeah. Express the madness. So that was awesome. You found a way that should resonate really well with everybody. I believe it's. It's there. I think it's going to be an interesting film to see the reactions that come from it because there is so much that goes on in that movie and. The ending is, you know, the ending. You guys know what that is. And I think it's going to be really, I'm really curious to see how it resonates. You, la you laid people. out a brain twist. I think a brain twist effectively takes time to evolve after you see it. Because after you watch it, it's like, what the hell almost. But then after you think about it, or, or, or rewatching it time, it's just like, okay, that was kind of a masterpiece. What well, I, was doing. I will say, I am really regretting uh, passing up on a cameo in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we should have got you as uh, an assembly member or Man, something. That would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah. Next time. Next time. For for sure. And, and that's another thing about the movie is like, there's so many fucking characters in it. It's like, it's an Dude, ensemble cast. Like, <laughs> How many people do you think worked on this movie overall throughout the entire process? Mm, that's a good question. I'd say maybe 60, 70. Good yeah, God. I'd say something like that. Maybe. I mean, um, so had a lot of extras because I'm pretty sure that at least the cast part of it is like in the 40s. I'm thinking, I think there's 40 people. Well, that least. IMDb page took so long I'm, to set up. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> we actually need to update a couple things on there. But uh, but oh, yeah, <laughs> get to work. Um, no, it's. Uh, I think I, I'm definitely the biggest project I've ever had. You know, uh, production wise, on a technicality level, um, and the narrative. I think I'm most proud of the narrative as far as like it's a cohesive, full, you know, come around circle moment of a narrative. Uh, he comes to kill was like. I, I think it's like best described as almost like a campfire story kind of, you know, it's a mixed bag of a lot it's like of trick or treat. Yeah. You know, you're pacing with that one. And I think you laid out something here that you just found something even further, further enhanced on originality from there. I think there's a lot of ways. I think definitely he comes to kill, definitely sharpen some skills of mine to shoot something as big as that was yeah, with was, an ensemble cast, ambitious. the pacing exactly. and everything. Um, but the narrative was writing itself as I was filming it, you know? So it definitely wasn't like, put together beforehand it was kind of just like all right we're doing this on the fly essentially like because so many things go wrong yeah during the shoot. you have to adapt on the fly totally like, um joe's character not supposed to be nearly as big as it was yeah. you know re i rewrote scenes two days before we shot it you know we we figured out scenes right then on the spot joe came up with this kind of persona of a character you know Adding kills on the spot yeah because the, the actors wanted to die yeah right <laughs> There you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, John, you know, yeah, he, he wasn't even John. supposed to be uh, killed. <laughs> you guys were just like, I was like, fine, we'll kill you. <laughs> like, but and it was the best. Oh, of course. Movie. But, you know, so something out of that was magic, but it was like just mixedly put together. And this one was like yeah. planned and fully constructed. And, you know, shout out Frank Aguilar, of course, uh, for writing this thing. And, um, and I assisted with some of those scenes as well. But like, you know, we we kind of attacked it in that approach of a narrative standpoint. And I think it really shows. I'm yeah. really excited about yeah, it. Yeah, man, you really did. I thought that was just so incredible how you laid all that. And again, Joe, uh, you told me earlier is your favorite character of the film. Is that? Camera just went into sleep mode. Sleep mode. Oh, boy. That's we got a, a B camera here going on. Um if you want to take a look at it real quick. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Keep go going. ahead, Blake. But yeah, uh, I was kind of uh, interested because you were mentioning earlier how Joe is your favorite character in the story. Um, mm -hmm. I, know you, I know they're all kind of personal fears. You say you have a special resonance with his character. I'm curious kind of what, what that all means to you. <clears throat> yeah, um, I would say, I mean, without giving too many spoilers, of course, like Joe's character, I think for me, I had probably the most relation with like in, in terms of prep for. Me uh, and Joe really had some deep conversations about where that character comes from and who he is and things like that. And I think it's just like Joe's approach for acting is so like, it can be, he can go in any range, but this one is such, we, that was one note we wanted to do, make sure he wasn't going chief Sanders in this movie. You know, chief Sanders was a very loud character and he comes to kill um, this movie. We wanted, we like told ourselves, Let's not do that. Let's take this subtle approach. And then because we wanted it to feel like real horror, you know, we wanted this to feel like someone in real life could walk in on this, you know. So his approach of the whole film is so subtle, but it's very, very intense at the same time. Yeah. And just the way he like the way he his words come off his tongue is just like it's very, very 
like it sucks you right in and you're just like it's very insane how it does it, but it also feels very uh, grounded in the in yeah how it does it. totally like that i like how grounded the the storytelling is uh-huh. you know, it's more than ever in a way and i think that character joe particularly it's just, yeah, he yeah, reminds you of Anton Shiger particularly influenced a lot. What's the who's? Anton Shiger and uh, No Country for Old Men. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It, 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 he it, does kind of give off that vibe. I can that. see that. That's yeah. cool, yeah. Like, very menacing, very much like an overwhelming, like, once you see him, you almost just fear he could be behind you at any moment. Kinda, yeah, like, totally. He kind of dominates the whole I like the, that, yeah. Yeah, his um, yeah, I think Joe just kind of, there's something about it. When I see him on screen, I'm, I'm excited the most, you know. And then, of course, I mean, the whole cast, I, uh, the, out of the handful of people who've seen it has complimented the cast i mean of across the board you know of course ginger but like all of our strange films family from up north and down here had gave great performances and i i'm very proud of everyone in that movie i mean really everyone brought it seriously best no, can. Applause to everyone eileen involved. party clown you know we got jim canatelli as mick yes you know, i know that's one of your favorite characters oh, of the yeah, you know white lavender jones as uh older mick and even his performance is like it's pretty like it's a lot obviously it's a lot different than what he's done before yeah. but like he sold it you know he sold it and ray bolden he's i mean everyone in this one he's amazing totally amazing and so everyone really brought something to it so pl- surprises and twists and turns at every given moment too it's really an unpredictable sort of film the whole way through like, yeah you know uh-huh. you never know what beat it'll take next and i mean that in the best like, way like, i was on set for like a third of the movie and i was still surprised quite a few times it's very surprising it. it's very yeah. surprising yeah. i like yeah. when you told me that when after you watched it i was like yes <laughs> all right cool <laughs> like I wish I could have been involved more, but I'm kind of glad I wasn't because mm-hmm. I got that sort of feeling of I haven't. This is a new experience for me. Right. Like, I haven't been able to see it. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm obviously the production stuff for the film was very was very physically, mentally demanding for me. Did that, did that get back up running for you? Yeah, that's good. OK, cool. Um, but and the edit the post production, I'd say, was my the biggest headache out of everything um it's so it of, i'm a lot of time yeah so i'm 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 i was sick of looking at it for you know after i got it done and then i was even scared to start showing it to people um because i was like i don't know it looks i don't know if it's trash i don't know if da, da, da. but now that i've shown it to a core amount of people that needed to watch it first um it's been very good feedback and then some people are not even associated with the film giving me good feedback i'm feeling a lot more confident i'm like okay i'm ready to celebrate it i'm ready to put it out there and market it and all that stuff so um but yeah i, I appreciate all kind words guys i'm watching it early yeah, you and should be proud thank you, you should thank be. you, yeah, you it's, this, and you know the biggest thing i need to take from this also it, it is always a learning lesson i mean like uh we had some production hiccups you know of course as always and being a no budget indie uh set there's things now that I learned even at the best of the production aspects of it could have been a lot better still. Like there's things about it that I know that I can, I'm, I'm going to be looking out for the next time around. There's going to be things I'm going to want more prepared. And also I, I really do want to focus on more of the directing side of things. You know, I want to have a proper DP, a proper like, you know, sound guy, it's, you know, all these different roles that I know I did a lot of work on, but I could have my hands off you know, not I'm as an much. actual assistant director. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like things like that, where we're just, you know, I'm, I'm more set up for success for the whole process. Definitely. And there's always going to be hiccups, of course, but, um, well, you know what, where it's like, you're almost giving out so much stress where, okay, you can give it to other people who can take it just what exactly what you're saying, you know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, okay, well you it, don't have to do all that. Yeah. It's and it's hard to get the right people involved. Yeah, exactly. We got to have the right people involved because that's another thing. I have a lot of control issues sometimes you know and i and i even hate to say it like that but it's just like i've i've been so used to doing it by myself for so long it's hard and i know what it's i like to articulate I what, exactly what you want yeah when it's like that but i it even learn because normally i score my movies but not, uh, we have to give the shout out to enemy on tape man the score made that movie i mean absolutely I, it, that score is incredible everyone who's watched it has said that that score is off the fucking hook and especially it is especially during the finale <laughs> oh my god that's my favorite part dude i mean yeah, i got chills amazing. when i watched it i still get chills watching it i mean but his his score is incredible and that was another thing normally for myself scoring the movie working with him i had to articulate what i was looking for and that was actually the probably the smoothest thing out of post production itself because we just instantly got each other and we were able to do that and it worked so perfectly so are you seeing this as a co- sort of a continuing uh like partnership that you're going to want to pursue in the totally future? yeah and we talked about it he wants to still work with me um on projects so as long as he's willing i i mean i'm probably going to be hitting him up first about uh projects and um scores and everything i mean just and the thing is he started off um 
originally, you know, he made a song for He Comes to Kill, like, you know, just like a Stanley Kill song. It's a really cool, like... I remember the music. Yeah, it was a real cool, you know, it it sounded really nice, and he blended the elements of the movie with it. He did the same thing for The Gifted, uh, based off the trailer, that the first trailer with Joe walking through the graveyard, and he made this really cool sound, this song for it. And I was like, oh, that's awesome, man, I like it. I was like, I could probably see it in the credits or something. Um, And then he was like, yeah, no worries, whatever you want to do, whatever. And then... It was when I was editing the birthday party scene. He had something in that first original song he sent me that I was like, can you, is there any way you could pull that part of that and maybe so I could use it for this birthday party scene? And he's like, well, if you like, I'll take a look at the birthday party scene and maybe I could score it. And I was like, sure, here you go. And then he blew me away with the first like rough draft of a score. I was like, wow. I was like, do you just want to score everything? <laughs> it's like, so it, it was just, everything kind of just fell into place naturally. But yeah, I would love to work with him again and again and again. He was incredible. I can't wait for people to listen to that score. Fantastic. Yeah. I absolutely love it. It's um, original. So yeah, but the, the gifted's out. Uh, I mean, not out, but it's, uh, it's done. I'm, I'm glad to have it done and glad you guys watched it. Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad I could watch it. I loved it, man. Yeah. So everyone on the podcast, you listening, um, I'm going to be announcing some more, like, release stuff over in the, the next few weeks as far as, like, the gift it goes. But between March and May, it's when you'll start seeing waves of public releases, um, some screenings, events, and then eventually it will be on YouTube at probably in May, I think. So, but yeah, for now, uh, just kind of getting the game plan of marketing together. So, yeah. all right. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, what's new, boys? What's going on with you guys? 